lot of times in relationships, a couple might think, you know, we're just not compatible when it comes to the, our sexuality, which it may just be that like you're speaking French and your partner's speaking Japanese and you're just literally not like speaking the same language. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live installment of the My Sex Bio series. Today, we are going to be talking with Ellie McPherson about her upcoming class with the My Sex Bio studio. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So I did say a little bit, but I'm going to repeat this, that what we're talking about today's class, which yep. is unlocking pleasure. So what are the erotic blueprints? What is that? Yeah. So a way to think about it is kind of like if you heard of the concept of the love languages, right? Like I receive, I like gifts versus touch. The erotic blueprints are a similar concept, but it relates to how your body is uniquely wired to enjoy pleasure. So the idea is that we're all wired differently. So something that I might like is not something that you might like. And why this is really important is a lot of times in relationships, a couple might think, you know, we're just not compatible when it comes to the, our sexuality, which it may just be that like you're speaking French and your partner's speaking Japanese and you're just literally not like speaking the same language. So the idea of the erotic blueprints is starting A, learning who like who you are as an erotic person. And I think what's important about this concept is that in our world, we tend to think of like, well, I'm a sexual being like over here, you know, with my partner or in my bedroom. And then I hear I am, you know, a working person. I hear I'm a mom and I'm these sort of separate personalities. But a big piece of what I talk about in my coaching is like, you are an erotic being in all of your life. Like you're always you. And knowing that is not just in the bedroom, like who you are is who you are everywhere. So understanding who you are from this like sort of wired uh, physical place. Yes, it will help you as you relate to your partner and also to yourself in terms of how you like to receive pleasure. But it also influences just how you like experience and walk through the world. So the idea of the blueprints is that there are five blueprints and each of us might show up in slightly different like combinations of these. And there's actually a, a quiz we can post on, if, we, if you want, we can post the, the quiz so people can get an idea of just from an intellectual level, what their, what their type is. But there are five main erotic blueprints. And I'll go in when we go into this, I'll explain a lot more about each one when we do our, our class next week. But on a high level, there's um, energetic. So people who are really, they like tease, they like anticipation, they like space. So so think about like the sort of stereotype of this is like, you know, someone who's kind of like into crystals and space and music and kind of like that kind of like yoga-y music. But when it comes to their sexuality, this is someone who like, if you come into their space too fast, they might be kind of turned off. Like they need the tease and anticipation and the space to get into things. And that is how they relate in a sexual context, but also think about like, even in like daily life, right? You are who you are all the time. So that's the energetic. And we'll go into a lot more about this in in the class. And then there's the sensual, who are people who like are really into, think about like massage and touch and like, you know, snuggling um, and their environment, right? People who are really, they are turned on and and they're really sensitive to like the the, touch, like the, the ambiance, the feel of their clothes, smells, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the sensual type. And then we have the more sexual type, which is more just like cut and dry, right? Like what's, why do we need all this other stuff? You know, let's just get to the point. And that's sexual context. It can be like, yeah, let's just, you know, we don't need all this other stuff, but also a sexual person can be more, even in life, it's like a little more direct. It's like, let's just, let's just get to it. <laughs> and then, then there's the kinky type, which is a big world, but we generally think of kinky in the kinky realm there's like the sort of physical side of kinky which can be people who are kind of turned on by more like intensity of experience intensity of sensation so everything from like you know restriction like tying being tied up or spanking or that kind of more physical sensation stuff and and then there's also like the psychological side of kink which is it really gets into fun stuff around playing with power dynamics like masculine feminine yin and yang light and dark playing with power stuff. So those are the main five blueprints. In every single person, most people will kind of gravitate towards one, but have other pieces show up in themselves as well. And it's like, as you start to get into this and learn more about them, you'll start to realize like in yourself, and this is not just in your head, but like in your body, right? Like noticing, yes, like, okay, when X, Y, Z, that lights me up, that turns me on, that gets me aroused in your body. And yeah, so learning that, like sort of knowing that about yourself is A, important for just knowing like who you are and how you operate for yourself and also very much in relation to a partner. So the more you kind of start to, like when I think about my life and the more I've come to really understand this and I think about past relationships, what worked, what didn't work, it's like, oh, 
I think so much to now. Like we literally just weren't on the same page. You know what they were giving me wasn't what I needed. And it wasn't anything wrong with me or them. We just were literally like on the same page. So aside from taking this quiz that well, anyone who registers on org is going to get a link to this quiz so that they can take it before the class. And aside from this quiz, what is, um, how, how do you take that results, the results from that quiz and then bring that into class? What do we do with it? So the idea of the quiz is that it's like kind of in your head, right? The concepts of this, but where it really starts to land is in your body. So when I work with people one-on-one -on -one in, in the coaching or in, a, in our class, we'll actually like do an, you know, do an exercise and start to feel into, okay, what kinds of, it, can even, it doesn't have to be like really sexual touch, right? It can just be like, okay, I'm touching my hand. Like energetic touch might be more, I'm not even really touching my hand. I'm just, I'm playing with the space and the tease and like, does it turn me on or do I feel this? Like for some people, there's a lot of sensation in that tense, that sensation of the anticipation and the tease of being touched. For some people, this not not doing anything. And it might just be more like really light, like the more sensual, right? Which is like the massage and the stroking. So even in your own body, you can start to play with this and notice. And then with a partner, a really fun way to play with this is a game where you literally like have your partner lie down and, and just try different. And it can be pretty PG. This doesn't have to be very sexy. It can be just like touching their arm in different ways and just getting their feedback. You know, do you like touch, let's say touch A, like I do like a with my nails, right? Touch B could be more of a stroke. Which one do you like better? So there's no right or wrong answer. There's no doing it wrong or doing it right. It's just getting information from your partner about what they like. And then all those clues start to lead up to like, hey, yeah, this person really likes the more sensual touch. Or they're not really into that, but they really love it when I like, you know, squeeze hard constriction or use my nails. So your body is your body will override your mind, right? The mind might study like, especially when it comes to kinky stuff, right? Like we have a lot of ta maybe taboos or things in our life in our society around what it means to be kinky and people might almost want to like well I don't want or I don't or a guy might think I need to be like you know macho sexual I don't want to be more sensual but your body is your body and you like what you like so it's just about in that and knowing that and then the more you know that and the more you accept that and then the other key piece of this is once you know that communicating that to a partner so, like, so that your sexual experiences and the way you move through the world are really feeding you. And this is a big thing we talk about is this idea of being fed because it's not, not all touch is, is equal, right? For, for who you are. And so if you've been having, I think this, this speaks a lot to like people who maybe they are in a relationship and they are, you know, having sexual experiences on a regular basis, but it's just not doing it for them, right? Because we all know like every sex ex sexual experience is not, is not equal to the other. So part of that is like the chemistry with your partner, the mood, there's, you know, there's a lot of factors, but a lot of part of it also is being touched and having an experience. And it's more than just touch, it's like the energy, like how you're, how they, how you're talking to each other, the whole ambiance. The more you know how you're wired, the more you can create experiences that really feed your soul in a really, really deep way. So I definitely, I definitely work with people who have a partner, but they're just, they're just not getting sex in the way that they need it. And the more they can understand, oh, okay, it's not, nothing's wrong with me. I'm not asexual or I'm not having low libido. It's just that like what I've been getting is not doing it for me. And what would you say to people who maybe, so to me, when you say that, I think about how a lot of people don't realize that they're not having sex at their fullest potential. They just think that, this is what it is. This is as good as it gets. And they don't realize that they can level up in a way. How, what would you say to those people who maybe think that they're having good sex and they wouldn't need to like tap into these blueprints? What would you say to them? I think it can always be better. Like that's a sort of my philosophy in life. <laughs> and so not like a pressure, not like, oh, you know, it has to be you know, your, you know, your, your sex that you think is great, isn't that great? And that's not at all the idea, but it's like, if it could be better, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to try? Wouldn't you want to know yourself better? <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. So why, I think there's a lot of talk, and especially at My Sex Bio, we talk about pleasure quite a bit, how to bring more pleasure into your life, how to, you know, make X, Y, Z experience more pleasurable. Why do you think it's so important that we have this kind of pleasure in our life? Well, first of all, like even just where we are in the world right now, right? There's a lot of a lot of suffering right now, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and all, all that's up in our heads. And it just we're all, you know, and I, I'm also have a tendency to kind of get up in my head and get stressed and overthink things and completely disconnect from my body. But pleasure is in the body, and pleasure and being in the body brings you back to this moment right here, right now where in this moment right now right here everything is fine right nothing else really matters and that ability to come to drop out of your head into your body and it 
from a spiritual perspective, it's like kind of connecting to your true essence, like your higher power. This is, this is who I really am. This ego, all this stuff in my head is a distraction, but in my body, I know, I know who I am. So I think that's part of it is like that centeredness and you access that through physical pleasure. And that can even just be as simple as like, you know, be in a quiet morning kind of pleasure. But I think sexual pleasure, especially, I think our, well, I, I don't think I know, like scientifically, our bodies are hardwired for pleasure. We have a, like, women have like 8,000 nerve endings in their clitoris. There's yeah. so much pleasure there. Like we are designed, our bodies are designed for that pleasure. I think unfortunately, many of us were like, if you think about growing up, right? Most of us were not taught to enjoy self-pleasure. If anything, we were taught to something that you kind of, it's kind of shameful or you kind of do it on the down low. But there is so much research that shows that like being in your pleasure on a regular basis, whether that's with a partner or, or on your own, releases like all kinds of positive chemicals in your brain, confidence, connectedness, alive. I mean, your sexuality is your vitality, essentially. And if you're disconnected from that, your source in that way, yeah, you're alive, you're walking through the world, but like you are not in your true, true aliveness. So on a most basic level, pleasure is about, you know, it's healthy. It's like, it's like self-care 101. <laughs> and on a slightly higher level, like tapping into that and being connected to your source of pleasure that is all there in your body is kind of your portal to, to all kinds of like higher level functioning. I love that, I, that what you said um, about sexuality being vitality. That's amazing. Fashion on a t-shirt, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that should be the next seizure <laughs> I think it's kind of crazy though like you say there's all there's ridiculous amount of nerve endings in the clitoris and the clitoris exists purely for pleasure there's no other reason for it to exist and there's a lot of things like that that just point to the fact that sexual pleasure is natural healthy and necessary well if necessary if you're a sexual being some people don't have like some people who are asexual might not be interested in that which is fine and but yeah so you're right pleasure i like what you're saying pleasure and sexuality is our vitality so when we so for those who are, who are just starting us now this we're talking about this class that ellie is hosting a week from today at 7 30 p.m eastern <clears throat> about tapping into our erotic blueprints and what would you say, Ellie, uh, why is this class going to improve pleasure in our love life? Is it, is it that it's going to give us these tools to read our own blueprints? Are we going to read our, yeah, do you want to speak more on that? How it's, yeah. So number one, I'm just going to introduce the idea of the blueprints. So for a lot of people, this might be a totally new concept and it might be as simple as being like, oh, you know, it makes so much sense. I've like, there's, I've definitely had cases or stories where people like, for the first time in their life, like, oh, like, I get it now. Like, the reason why I didn't like, you know, the sex I've been having my whole life is because I'm actually really kinky. And this is what I've been having is not, it's like you've been eating, I don't know, like raisin brain your whole life, but what you really need is Fruit Loops. <laughs> and you just didn't know that was the problem. And once you learn that what you need is Fruit Loops, you can go out and find Fruit Loops. <laughs> So part of it's that is kind of just understanding that there are these different blueprints and kind of where you fit into that. Because you, the idea, remember, like one of the biggest takeaways here is like nobody, we are all, no one is broken. No one is messed up. We're, we're all just different. And there are different flavors of sexuality. None of it is wrong. None of it is shameful. It's just different. And then, so knowing whether you're partnered or not. So even as, even if you're, you know, a single person, we'll talk about how to feed your blueprint. So also kind of knowing, okay, so for myself, I'm very sensual. Like I love smells and like oils and being outside in nature and sunshine and doing yoga and moving my body. That completely lights me up. And I knew that, but once I learned about the blueprints, I was just like, oh yes, like this makes so much sense. And it wasn't just something that I kind of sort of knew about myself. It became like, this is integral to who I am and how I operate at my best. And so now I like, now I like hug trees and smell flowers with, with total abandon because I'm like, this is just who I am. This is like a key part of my vitality. Um, it's not just some weird thing I do. <laughs> so it's partly that it's like knowing yourself. And so that's something that like, you know, smelling flowers, whatever, that's not explicitly sexual thing, but it taps into that part of me and helps me understand also why I love massage and things like that, right? So that helps me know myself better and really keep myself fed 
because when you're walking through life starving in that way, you're just, you're just kind of disconnected, right? Like you're, you're there, but like the lights have on. So knowing how to give that to yourself. And then also in a partnership, knowing what you want, again, means you can ask a partner for it. And also means that you can begin to sort of understand your, if you were in a partnership to know your partner better, and maybe you've been touching them a certain way because that's what you like. But especially when people have been together for a long time, like they stop asking each other. You kind of get in a rut. So it can be becoming more cognizant who your partner is and how they might like to be touched and changing it up and making it more of an exploration. Yeah, it, it reminds me of um, what's the test that you take where you're like INFP. Yes, Myers-Briggs. <laughs> yes, 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 Myers-Briggs test. It reminds me of that because, you know, it sounds like you can kind of be a little bit of each thing, more prominent in some than others. Is that right to, th to think? Yeah. And it can like, usually people have one way they, sh and this is also, it's not like a set in stone thing, right? People's sexuality can evolve over time. So it can evolve over time. It can be different at different points in your life. We also talk about not only there's these types, but there's sort of stages of sexuality. And again, this, it's not hierarchical. It could be, you know, if I just, let's say I just had a kid. I could be in a very resting state. Like I have no interest in that because my body is, is, is like literally healing or resting. Or there could be someone who's in a very uh, adventure stage in their life. And they, you know, maybe they're free, they're newly out of a relationship and they're like, I want to go like have a threesome and I want to try this and I want to do that. And that's another thing. But then maybe in 10 years time, they're, you know, I'm just, I just want to be celibate for a while. So it's not like there's a hierarchy, but it's kind of understanding where you're at in terms of your sexuality at any given moment in time, what your type is at any given moment in time. I like that. Yeah. Like that, uh, that there's no hierarchy, that this is a fluid thing. Because it's true. And, and I think it's very cyclical in a lot of ways. And everybody's cycle can look different. Um, of course, I'm saying that just off the top of my head, like not like- a But you know, there's, so, and there's like life factors, there's hormonal factors. There's what's going like, you know, there's so much going on in life that affects all these things. Yeah. So someone's asking, what will we learn in the class? Um, us, so we're learning these tools. Can you walk us through a bit of the structure of the class that we're going to walk through? Yeah. So I'm going to introduce, we'll start by talking about this idea of pleasure and why it's important and how, you know, how to access pleasure and not, and how this, so what is pleasure? Why is it important? All what it does for your life. We've talked about briefly earlier, and then we'll go into this idea of each of these five blueprints. So I'm going to go into more detail around each blueprint, kind of how to identify in yourself and other people, the superpowers of each blueprint and the shadows of each blueprint. And then we'll go through all the blueprints. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to feed each blueprint. So knowing how each blueprint operates, how to feed each blueprint, meaning like, if, for example, if I'm, if I'm sensual, right, like self-massage could be an awesome way for me if I'm feeling in my head or disconnected or out of touch, just, slow, you know, just really easy ways to reconnect with your body in a way that works, that's wired for your body. When you say uh, the superpower in the shadow, maybe without going into too much detail, because I know we're going to talk about it in class, what, what does that mean? Like what's the sh mm. shadow and the superpower? Okay, so I'll give you an example, like the sexual blueprint, right? Because that's what we think of the most in our society as what is sex. So a superpower of a sexual, of a person who's quite sexual is that they can go from zero to 60 like that. You know, they don't need a lot of foreplay or easy, like sex is easy, right? Whereas for some people getting turned on and, and getting into a, the mode for sex doesn't always feel easy. For a sexual, it's easy. It's like, bam, sex is, it's black and white. Here we go. So in some ways that's a superpower, but a shadow is more kind of like, could be like a limitation of that would be that for, if someone who's quite sexual, yes, sex is easy, but they might have a very, um, limited view of sex that basically sex is like intercourse penetration whereas sex can be there's you know that's one very limited what view of sexuality it tends to be what porn teaches us but there's so many other ways that people can enjoy themselves and each other in a sexual way that if you have that limited idea of what sex is you're just missing out you know it's like you're you're at like applebee's or something right when you could be at like all the buffets <laughs> So th does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, I like that. It's interesting because I think often like the word shadow in terms of, well, like in, like in psychiatry, we have like our shadow work and things like that, that I was instantly thinking of, but it's kind of like just the opposite of a, not the opposite, but a hindrance, potential hindrance on us. Yeah. It's more like something to be aware of because you be like, oh, sweet, like this and that, but also keep in mind that potentially like another common one that we talk about is so and i'll relate to this as essential is um you know so one of the superpowers of essential as i kind of said like i enjoy flowers and nature right like everything can be your entire environment can be really exciting and you can find pleasure in in like the smell the smell of an oil or the 
touch of the breeze on your face, right? So you have all these like portals in nature to, um, to pleasure and enjoyment. So I would call that a superpower, no, like knowing that about yourself. But a really common shadow for essential, and, and it shows up in a lot of people too, is being in your head, like I mentioned, right? So essential is like, they might be like really into their environment. It's like, they like the sheets, they like the smells, they want to have music. But then like, if the floor, if like the, you know, there's like a laundry on the floor or the lighting's not quite right, they could be really distracted and like off in their head. They need everything in their environment to be kind of perfect so they can like let go and be in their body. So that is something to be aware of. And it's all, but it also is a way of, uh, it's a shadow, but it's also, it's like, oh, nothing's wrong. It's not like that I'm, something's wrong with me and I, I can't just get in the mood. It makes sense that that's why I get distracted by these things. It's, it's not just something wrong with me. It's just kind of part of who I, part of my type, part of my archetype. <laughs>